Welcome back to the Work Truck Revival Project. In the last episode, we pulled off the driver's side fender and cut out some of the rust. So if you missed that, make sure you go back and watch that first. In this installment, we're gonna be fixing the inner structural part of the fender, getting our patch panel fit and welded into place, and then hopefully filled with body filler, feathered and primed. We're also gonna be fixing some body imperfections and surface rust around the wheel arches. Now we have a lot of work to do today, so let's get right into it. And if you want to learn how to fix your vehicle, do budget restorations, troubleshoot equipment, and all sorts of other types of garage related stuff, be sure to subscribe to Midwest Garage so you don't miss anything. Also, I now have shirts, hoodies, and all sorts of cool stuff available for purchase. So if you like what I'm doing on the channel and want to support me, make sure you click the link down in the description and pick one up. So as you can see, we obviously need to fix all of this since it is structural. Fix that and then this corner. So I'm gonna make multiple pieces, weld them together to make a patch panel for this. Also, you'll see that there is a little bit of rust up in here that goes underneath. And since this isn't a frame off restoration or a showroom truck by any means, I'm just gonna get some rust reformer up in there to stop it from rusting and go from there. Now, I'd be willing to bet that you have never seen an uglier weld than that, but it doesn't matter because it's sturdy. It's a lot stronger than this stuff right here. It fits and nobody's gonna see it because it goes underneath our panel. All right, so I have some tack welds in and it's way more solid than it was. Now on to the next piece down here. So for this chunk of rust, I'm actually gonna be using two different pieces to repair it. So I'll have this one in right here, just because then it's easier to just make a simple kind of square deal right there instead of trying to form one piece. Now, is this work pretty? God, no. It looks absolutely hideous, but it's structural and all the rust is gone and that's what counts because at the end of the day, nobody's gonna see this. And as I've said before, this isn't a showroom restoration or anything like that. We want it to be functional and look decent. After all, it's a work truck revival, not a work truck restoration. Now, this part down here, I'm really leery about cutting out and fixing because as you've seen, my metal fabrication skills are subpar at best and I really need this lip 
to fit correctly so that I have something to butt weld to because that's an important piece for the bottom part of the patch panel. And so I know I'm gonna get a lot of flack for this, but I think what I'm gonna do is just leave this part alone and use some rust reformer to convert that rust to metal, seal it, and then throw a coat of primer over it so that way it doesn't rust anymore and just end up leaving it because I'd really hate to mess this piece up and end up botching all the work that I did here to make sure that we have a solid place to plug weld to. So we'll get some rust reformer on this right here and all of this to stop that from rusting any further. Get rid of some of the surface rust around here. Get a coat of primer on all this and then move on to the fun part, which is fitting, cutting, and installing our patch panel. While I'm waiting for that primer to dry, I'll just get rid of some of this random surface rust around different parts of the fender and use a dolly and a hammer to try and fix some of these imperfections around the wheel arch. A lot of the crinkles you see in the front of the wheel arch are from the factory where they had folded the sheet metal over. And so we're not gonna be able to really fix that because that's how it came from the factory in 1976. But we can at least make it look a little bit better. And all I'm using for this is a DA sander and 60 grit sandpaper. Depending on the severity of the rust, I'll either use coarser or finer grit. And as we're going along, you'll be able to see some high spots and low spots in the bodywork. And so that's a good place where we can use a little bit of filler and practice feathering where it's on the bottom of the fender and not very noticeable. As usual, when it comes to bodywork on an old truck like this, you'll see that some of this rust in this area sanded off nicely. There is a pinhole. I should be able to plug weld that. However, you look over here where I started grinding away. And even though it was just bubbling inside the paint, you can tell that it's fully rotted out. So unfortunately, we will have to cut this out and make a patch but we'll continue sanding so that way we know where the good metal starts and how big we have to make our patch. So luckily this patch isn't going to be that big and it's on a straight line and I'm not a betting man but I'd be willing to wager that all of this bubbling also needs to be cut out and the part that really sucks is this body line here and I can already tell that this needs to be cut out unfortunately so like I said with most body work once you start dealing with rust and you start sanding away the surface rust, you end up really opening a can of worms. But the only way to get rid of this and make sure it doesn't come back is to fix it correctly. One nice thing and one reason why I started with the driver's side of the truck is, generally speaking, most of the time, the driver's side has worse rust damage than the passenger side. And that's simply because the driver's side sees more salt and road grime and rust from passing vehicles than the passenger side does. So I figure starting with this set first, getting rid of all the tough repairs, the passenger side will go a lot faster and be a lot easier. So remember when I first pulled this panel off and I showed that there was a couple soft spots but we should be able to fix it without doing patches? Well, you can call me a liar. Even though there's solid metal around here, The fact that it rusted through means that we're better off just cutting all of this out instead of trying to plug weld everything because then it'll just look better in the long run. So you guys are lucky. Oh. So you guys are lucky. You thought that you were just going to get to see a patch panel installed today, but we're also going to be doing work around the wheel arch. So let's get to this first and then we'll start on the wheel arch and making our own patch panels. Now, as you remember, this Sharpie line right here is where our patch panel comes to. And we left about an inch all the way across. We're going to be trimming this down, but I'll explain why I left so much in just a minute. Now for the important part on how you want to fix this and how you want to butt these together. And this is important, so hopefully you're still watching at this point. And I'll explain with my whiteboard right here. Now there are essentially two ways to fix this. And you don't just want to butt the two together like this because then when you come in and weld them, 
you're gonna have a high spot and when you grind that down, you're gonna have such a thin piece of metal here and you're gonna end up having pinholes essentially throughout here if you grind too much. So what we're gonna wanna do is knock down this just a little bit and knock down the other side so that they butt together like this. And then we run our bead or our multitude of tacks in this groove. So then when they're ground down a little bit, if you even have to grind them down, you come in with body filler and it's perfectly smooth and you'll never be able to tell that there's a patch here. Now there is one other way to fix a patch panel. We're gonna use this method on this fender and then on the passenger side fender, I'll use the other method so that way you can see both of them. Now, the other method is to get a tool like this. This is a flange tool. And if you look closely, there's a groove in there. And essentially what this does, and they make handheld versions also if you don't have an air compressor, just keep that in mind. But these are extremely handy to have. And essentially what this does is puts a groove in your sheet metal, either on this side or the other side, and makes the end look something like that. So then when you come in with your patch panel, it'll lay flush, and then you plug weld in here all along your panel, and then you come in with your filler, and it's seamless, and nobody will ever know that it was a patch panel. Like I said, we're gonna use this method on this fender and we'll use the flange tool and this method in the passenger side fender. And the rate we're going with this project, that's probably gonna be like episode 50. So make sure you stay tuned for every part of this build so you don't miss this. So the reason I left so much metal here is because now that this is all solid, everything moved a little bit back to where it was supposed to be. And so when I fit my patch panel, and I put it exactly where it's supposed to be, which is about right there. You'll see that we're off a little bit. This side's good, but we're off a little bit over here. If I would have cut this right to where I thought the patch panel was, I'd be too short here and I'd have to use a fill metal, stuff like that. It would end up being a real pain in the butt. So I'll mark my new line, which is my true line. And We'll pop this off and I'm going to have to butt weld here because there's structural metal behind. So I'll notch this out right at my line, come down maybe half inch or so, and then I'll probably butt weld up here too since this is a crease. And then on my patch, I'll leave this and I'll notch it down a little bit. Maybe I'll trim it a little bit. I'll kind of fit as I go. And then I'll bend both of these down so that way we can create our V-channel and get this tacked into place. So now I have everything prepped to fit my panel and weld it in. And you can either use a pair of pliers to slightly bend down your metal or you can use a body hammer and you can go ahead and be mean to it. You're not gonna damage anything. You just don't wanna lower the metal too much because then you'll have to use more filler. Now we have everything prepped to start welding. We'll get our patch panel in place. All of our holes are punched for our plug welds. We'll get all this set, clamped down, and begin our tacks. So you'll see that I'm continuously moving around in my spot welds, being sure to space them apart so that I don't get the metal too hot and end up warping it. But run a series of spot welds until this entire area is completely filled in. Now what I'm using here is a flux core welder. It's a wire feed welder, very similar to a MIG welder. However, instead of the machine and an air tank supplying the gas for your welds, this machine actually uses a wire that has 
the gas inside of it already. So in using this, your welds are a lot dirtier. You get a lot more slag and a lot more spatter. However, I like using it because of its convenience. It's a lot cheaper than having a MIG welder. And at the end of the day, it still gets the job done. All right, so the bottom portion is plug welded in. Doesn't look too bad. I need to hit that one one more time. And then coming up here, my welds are absolutely hideous. And like I had mentioned before, a lot of spatter, a lot of slag to clean up. Um, I burnt through a couple times on the ends, so I kind of got myself in a pickle, but I'll get that fixed up. We'll get these ground down a little bit, see if they look any better, see if there's any spots that I need to hit again. And overall, the placement is perfect. You can see along this wheel arch here, except for my little bit of weld that I need to grind down. Have a nice line all the way down and it's not looking too bad. So now all of our welds are ground down and even though it's not perfect, at least it's something we can fill and make look really good with some body filler. Now on to making our patch panel, just out of plain sheet metal. All we're gonna do is mark how big the patch is, make our lines, cut the rust out, and then use these measurements to create a patch that's just a little bit bigger than the hole that we cut out. And you'll see that I'm using the same cutoff wheel that I used when I first started on this fender. And it's getting smaller, but these things definitely last. If you're going through them like crazy, that means you're pressing too hard and you're putting too much pressure on the blade and you're not just letting the tool do the work for you. Now it goes without saying, but this inner part is all rotted out and I'm just gonna leave it because I don't care that much. So I'm gonna throw some rust reformer on here along the backside and make sure that it doesn't rust anymore. And I made just a very simple patch panel. It doesn't have to be perfect by any means, but you wanna make it just a hair bigger than the hole that you cut out. And what I'm gonna do is try to fit it underneath. And this is just a rough fit right now, but fit it underneath. Then I can come zap it in and then use body filler to perfectly smooth it out. And you'll never know that it's here. I should mention that if you want, you can go over. Um, it is easier and then you'd zap it in, but then you'd have to hammer the whole thing down to get it below the surface. So then you can fill it. It's just a little bit extra work. Luckily this fits right inside. So it's gonna be super easy for us. So I have a couple coats of rust reformer or rust converter, whatever you wanna call it, on the inner part of the fender. And if I haven't said this already, don't do what I'm doing, fix it correctly, cut all of the inner fender out, spend the time, do it right. But this is not a showroom truck or a frame off restoration. So I'm just gonna fit my patch panel in after this dries a little bit, and then I'll grab my welder and zap this into place. So once again, not the prettiest, but it's solid, it's not going anywhere, and it's a lot better than the rust hole that was there. And now we'll move on and do the exact same thing to all of these pinholes. So for this whole area, I'm actually gonna fix it differently than I did the other side. And what I think I'm gonna do, what I think is gonna be easiest, since a lot of these are on a curve, is I'm gonna take a piece of sheet metal and I'll lay it something like that. And this is just rough right now, but just kind of trace this around. I'll go from corner to corner. So that's my angle that I need to cut. And I'm gonna cut this metal out, which I don't know, will be something like that. I'll cut out this entire patch and then I'll get a piece of metal, angle it this way, and then weld it at a 90 degree angle like this. 
and I'll have this patch panel that I can then cut out, replace, and be good to go. With this, I'm gonna make my patch panel before I actually cut anything out, so that way, if it doesn't look right or it doesn't work, I can just start over on this instead of having to make a patch for all of this when at the end of the day, it might actually just be easier to patch little areas like I did over there. One thing to keep in mind is there is a little bit of a body line that comes across and although slight, it's nothing that we can't fix with body filler if I just have a straight piece. So I'm not too worried about that part. So this is turning out really good so far. And I was really hoping to get some body filler on this, but it's just not quite warm enough yet. And you can use body filler at this temperature. It's around 40, 45 degrees. But seeing as how my welding and my patchwork overall is kind of shoddy, I want to make sure that my Bondo is at the perfect temperature so I can work it as best as I can and make sure it sands easily when it's fully cured so that I can fix any imperfections that I have so far within my bodywork and my panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue cutting out the rest of the rust around that wheel arch. And then when you guys see this fender again, it's gonna be completely rust free, ready for primer, body filler, another coat of primer, and then eventually paint. Now this episode's getting really long, so I'm gonna have to cut it short and we'll get to this in part eight of the work truck revival project. We'll get through this quickly and then move on to the inner fender or the wheel well, and then continue on from there. So thanks for watching guys, I really appreciate it. Let me know if you're liking this series so far and make sure you check out some of the other videos that pop up around here. And of course, subscribe to Midwest Garage if you're not already. I have a ton of stuff coming out every week, including updates on the work truck revival project, as well as a lot of how-to videos. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.